Hello everyone, I am back today with another video for Not Too Shabby and the stamp set that I'm going to be using today is this new one called Easter Wishes. I'm also going to be using the new Dots for Spring paper pad for my little eggs. And if you saw my video on Friday, I'll have it linked on the card so you can check out how I colored in that bunny and how I created the eggs using the pattern paper. For this card, I am going to pull in another stamp set by Lawn Fawn. It just has a bunch of vegetables. I don't even know if this set is still available. It's one of their very first stamp sets, and I think I got it free somewhere. I'm not even sure if this stamp is still available, but if I can find it, I'll have it linked below. Um, but I thought these little carrots would be perfect to go with the bunny, and it is a layering stamp. You don't have to color these in, so I'm taking my Memento Dewdrop inks and stamping these out. So the carrots have two layers. This little uh, pink thing that I just stamped is like the label that you would put in the dirt to label the crops. Right now I'm stamping the green piece for the carrots, and this also has a layering detail. And you can use whatever inks you have. Um, I really like these dew drops because they're small, they're easy to store, and perfect for little images like this. So the stamp set includes some little faces that you can stamp on the vegetables, so I chose three cute faces for my carrots. I thought it kind of matched the whimsical style of the bunny stamp set. I'm also going to stamp the word carrots into the label and then I will die cut those out. I'm going to pull in another lawn fawn set here for the grass. I really wanted like some hilly grass and I'm also going to use a regular slimline stitched hill die that I'm going to cut from craft cardstock. But I want to show you that you can double cut if you have a Gemini. Um, so I have a folded piece of green cardstock that I am going to cut with the grass and then I'll be left with two pieces of grass. But for this um, little hillside, I only needed the one. So this is just one layer of craft. And then I'll just die cut those out. And then I'm also going to die cut a piece of blue cardstock from a slimline stitch rectangle die. This is by Trinity Stamps. And then here is my grass and my hillside. Originally, I wanted to do a horizontal card, but ultimately I felt like I could fit more onto a vertical card. But for now, I'm sticking with horizontal and I wanted my grass and my hill to have the stitching on the sides. So I just ran that die through again. Again, this doesn't really matter because I end up making a vertical card and I have to cut it again, but it does add like a nice, finished clean look. So this was initially what I was envisioning, but I didn't like how much brown was showing on this card. And that's kind of how I ended up wanting to do the vertical style. I also really wanted to add a fence for this little garden, and it just didn't work with the horizontal style. And back when I first made slimline cards, all I made were vertical, and I've slowly been doing more horizontal. And I forgot how much I enjoy creating scenes on a vertical slimline. So I'm really happy I went with that. The little stamp set includes these bees. So I thought I would add those in. And then here are my eggs that I stamped on the pattern paper. So here I have that fence. You can definitely put the fence in the front, but it would have ended up um, covering a lot of those carrots. So I wanted my carrots to not just float on top of the dirt. I kind of wanted them tucked into the dirt along with the label. So I just took a pencil and created a curve that I could follow with my scissors. And to start the curve, I just poked a hole through the paper and that ended up working out really well. I think Lawn Fawn actually has a die that does this for you, but it's super simple to just do it yourself. And as I cut these slits, um, I'm going to erase the pencil lines. And luckily, I made these slits close enough together where I could cut this panel down to a vertical style while still keeping the three carrots on one row. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. So here, now I can just tuck in my carrots, and I think that looks a little bit more natural and cuter. 
And then I'll also slip in that carrot label and then I'll go ahead and glue the green tops for them. And I was actually inspired to add these little carrots in because one of the sentiments in the stamp set says Cottontail Farms. So I thought it would be so cute to actually create a farm. And you can use that Lawn Fawn stamp set to add more veggies in. I think there's like turnips and radishes. Wait. I think radishes and turnips, are they the same thing? Let me know. But I know that there's turnips. Um, I can't think of the other vegetables. I think there's like corn. So yeah, it would be really cute to create a whole garden. So on my blue panel, I did want to add a little bit of cloud texture. So this is by far my favorite stencil. I've used it in the past like five videos I've posted and it just adds some clouds to your sky. So I'm using some unicorn white pigment ink by Hero Arts to stencil the clouds on. It's very subtle, but it does add some interest. And then here you can see this is where I decide to go with that vertical style. And then I gotta now trim all of my hills and grasses. So I am just positioning the dirt and trimming it while holding it to the panel and here it's very close but I did end up leaving these three carrots together which I was very happy about the carrot label did not make it but I think I move it next to the bunny and so the other thing I really like about this style is that I can offset the grass and the dirt as opposed to having one layer of dirt and one layer of grass and I really like this lawn fawn grass because um, it's a hill so you can offset it with the hill of the dirt and I'm kind of going a little bit off screen but I do think I fix it and here's a fence that I'm going to add to the front right in front of the bunny and then here I'm going to position my carrot label next to him and then I have the Easter basket from the stamp set I figured I have room now I can add that which I wasn't able to add with the horizontal style so I added a couple more eggs into the basket and then I think I add one more fence to the top behind the basket and then I just fill in the scene with my eggs And I think this turned out super cute. And then I still have plenty enough room for my pretty large sentiment at the top. So to glue these hills down, I'm taking some washi tape and first I'm running them through that stitch rectangle die just to get that stitching on the side and also make sure that everything is cut to the same width as the panel because some of these are overhanging. And then I want to glue the back two hills flat to the panel and pop up the front two. So I'm removing the back two from the front. And I'm going to tuck in my carrots and add a regular art glitter glue behind these. And that's going to keep those carrots in place. I'm also going to add some foam tape to the front of the carrots. So they're going to be raised up a little bit. But because the bottoms of them are glued flat, it still looks like they're in the dirt, which is so, so cute. So here's that foam tape I'm just adding behind each of the carrots. And then I'll go ahead and add one layer of foam tape to the grass hill. And then two layers of foam tape to the dirt hill. And I have U-line foam tape that is double width, so it's as if you layered two layers of foam tape, but it's already that thick. So that's what I'm adding to the sand, or not the sand, the dirt hill. And then I'll add just the one layer foam tape to the grass. I really love, especially with scene cards, having some different dimensions. It just adds a lot of interest. And I firmly believe, you know, I used to only create flat cards, like I would not add any dimension. And if I did, like I would only add like 
three foam squares to the back of a large panel and it doesn't go through the mail good so I'm much more generous than I used to be and I do add dimension to almost all my cards now it really elevates a card design I feel so here I'm gluing down my bunny I added glue to the spots that overlap the dirt hill and then I added the double foam tape width behind the face and the ears so that everything is level and then I'll go ahead and glue my fence flat for some reason I cut this too short but it ended up being okay because I just extended it I don't think you really notice it and then I'm going to stamp out my sentiment because I do want to clear heat emboss it I should have done this before I started gluing, but at least I caught myself halfway through. So I stamped it with Versifying Onyx Black ink and then I'll just heat set it. So here's that sentiment I was inspired by, Cottontail Easter Farm. Really cute. And then in the inside, I'm just going to stamp out Easter Wishes. So now I'm adding that final fence layer to the very back. And then I will adhere my basket. I'm going to add two eggs inside of it. And then I'm going to pop the basket up with the one layer of foam tape. I'm going to go ahead and glue the carrot label. And then I think I add one more egg to the right of the basket and then I add one B. I thought about using two, but I think I only go with one. And I love that I was able to tuck in so many eggs. I think that just really completes the scene, adds more color. And then that B is going to go right above that fence. I did pop it up. And then I'm going to mat this panel on some hot pink cardstock. So I cut that from a slightly larger stitch rectangle, adhering that down, and then all I'm going to do is glue it to my card base, and that is going to complete um, my third card using the Easter Wishes stamp set by Not Too Shabby. I will have it linked down below. I think it's such a cute stamp for scene building. Um, and the bunny is really fun to color. Um, I created a white bunny on the video on Friday if you want to see how that turned out. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I post my next video. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Bye!